Nearly all of the four billion species that once lived on Earth, about 99%, are now extinct. You're lucky to be a part of the 1% that's still here. But don't celebrate too soon. Our planet is facing challenges that might lead to more extinctions. In today's video, we'll explore the five major extinctions Earth has already survived and discuss the sixth one that scientists believe is happening now. We'll examine the causes of these past extinctions and what might lead to another one. Stick with us to learn about the greatest apocalyptic catastrophes of our planet Earth. To understand mass extinction, we need to know that species going extinct is a natural part of evolution. Normally, about 10% of species become extinct every million years, 30% every 10 million years, and 65% every 100 million years. This regular pattern of extinction is called the background rate. The background rate is how often species naturally go extinct without unusual causes. It's important to realize that extinction, along with the creation of new species, drives evolution. However, sometimes extinctions happen much faster than this normal rate, usually due to extra environmental or biological pressures. Mass extinction is when an exceptionally large number of species die out in a relatively short period. And it's defined by two things. The number of species lost, called magnitude, and how quickly they disappear, referring to the rate. To be considered a mass extinction, at least 75% of species must go extinct, typically in less than 2 million years. Now, let's talk about the mass extinctions that have occurred throughout Earth's history. The Ordovician Silurian extinction was the first big mass extinction event. It happened more than 443.8 million years ago. This period was marked by a massive rise in sea life and the first plants growing on the land. Many of these changes were stopped by the extinction event, which killed off about 71% of all species that were alive before it. Even though no one knows for sure what caused the extinction, the most popular theory points to a process called silicate weathering. Silicates are minerals that are found in the crust of the Earth. They store carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas that can warm the Earth. The theory says that Earth got colder after silicates took a certain amount of carbon dioxide. Ice sheets then formed on the planet's surface. After the ice covered the silicates, carbon dioxide rebuilt up in the air, which warmed the world enough to melt the ice sheets and reveal the silicates again. This happened over and over again in a feedback loop. The sea level and the weather would have changed so drastically because of this event that marine animals that couldn't handle the changes would have died out. Even though about 372 million years ago, the late Devonian extinction killed about 70% of all marine species that were alive at the time, it was one of the least severe big mass extinctions. The event of species going extinct happened slowly over many millions of years. So the rate at which the species went extinct weren't much faster than previous ones. On the other hand, the number of new species dropped sharply during that time. The change in the rates of extinction and speciation were probably caused by environmental stresses that happened at the same time. These stresses could have been anything from global warming to the effects of items from other planets. In the late Devonian epoch, there was ocean inoxia meaning there wasn't enough oxygen. This may have killed off many marine species. Still, it is not clear what caused the anoxia. One theory says it's because of more nutrients running off the continents into the ocean. If more nutrients reach the ocean from the land, more algae would grow in it, reducing the amount of oxygen it holds. Scientists are still arguing about this and other possible reasons for the extinction. What we know about the Permian-Triassic extinction, which is also known as the Great Dying, was the biggest mass extinction in ancient history. It happened about 252 million years ago and killed off at least 80% of the sea invertebrate species and about 70% of the land vertebrate species that were alive at the time. 
Earth's biodiversity dropped significantly. More than half of all animal groups may now be extinct. It's not clear how long the extinction event lasted. Some scientists say it was 15 million years, while others say it was only tens of thousands. Different time ranges suggest different reasons for extinction, but most of them have to do with changes in temperature and the carbon cycle. Studies show that many animals may have died because the oceans were too hot. Also, a series of volcanic eruptions that created the Siberian Traps, an area of volcanic rock, may have sent up clouds of ash that blocked sunshine and messed up food chains. Many amphibian and reptile species died out during the late Triassic extinction, which mostly happened at the border between the Norian and the Rhesian stages around 208 million years ago. Many invertebrate, fish and reptile species died out in the seas. These extinctions and the changes in the environment that came from them made it possible for dinosaurs to take over on land. The loss of species wasn't the result of a single incident. It happened gradually over time as the global carbon cycle changed. Large-scale volcanic activities that released a lot of greenhouse gases is probably what caused that strange event. These gases may have contributed to the rising global temperature that many species couldn't handle. The Cretaceous Paleogene extinction, or KPG extinction, happened about 66 million years ago and is perhaps the most significant mass extinction. About 67% of all species living at the time died, including all dinosaurs that were not birds. Because of this, animals and birds, avian dinosaurs, took over the land. Most scientists agree that the leading cause of the extinction was the impact of a massive object from another planet. An asteroid piece around 10 kilometers across hit Earth and sent massive waves of heat, dust, and soot around the world. The smoke in the air blocked the sun, which destroyed ecosystems. The biggest piece of proof for this event is a vast impact crater found in northeastern Central America, close to the Yucatan Peninsula. In the 1990s, Richard Leakey, a well-known geologist and environmentalist, warned that human actions were leading to a sixth mass extinction. Since then, a lot of new researchers supported this idea, and many scientists agree. Human activities are drastically changing living conditions on Earth, causing a rapid loss of different kinds of life. Dr. Katie Collins, a scientist at the Natural History Museum, points out that the current extinction rate is shockingly 100 to a thousand times higher than before humans had a significant impact. Experts predict that if we don't change our ways, up to half of all species could be extinct by 2100. Key causes of this loss includes destroying natural habitats, introducing species that don't belong, and overhunting wildlife. Climate change is also a big problem. It's happening much faster than animals and plants can adapt. This is largely because of too many greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, mainly from burning fossil fuels. The ocean is now warming 10 to 100 times faster than it did during the Permian-Triassic extinction, which saw a massive die-off of species. Now, it's worth asking, can we prevent a sixth mass extinction? Well, mass extinctions are complicated and can unfold over millions of years. Past extinctions were often due to drastic changes, such as shifts in temperature, sea level changes, or major events like volcanic eruptions. Now, the future of our world hinges on a crucial global effort to curb human activities that harm the planet. So Earth's history is marked by five major mass extinctions, each with its own causes and consequences. From the Ordovician Silurian extinction, linked to drastic climate changes, to the famous Cretaceous Paleogene event caused by a massive asteroid impact, these events have dramatically reshaped life on our planet. Today, we face the possibility of a sixth mass extinction driven by human activities, habitat destruction, climate change, and the introduction of invasive species are accelerating the loss of biodiversity at an alarming rate. As we reflect on the past and look to the future, one critical question remains. What will be the fate of the remaining 1% of species, including ourselves, if we don't act now?